is your incoming gas. So you've got an isolator either side of your meter and of course your meter. This then goes directly up into the plant room which is directly above us. So for straightforward easy isolation down here you've got your two valves. There is a second um, electrical valve upstairs in the plant room which we'll get to. Then we have your incoming mains. The water straight up, straight up into the plant room upstairs. You've got several pieces of equipment on this. Stopcock, double check valve, water meter, then we have an electrical isolation system in here. So if there's ever a flood, it will automatically shut the system down. It's also time control that outside of your normal working hours, uh, yet to be discussed with yourselves, this can control so there is no water allowed into the school itself. For example, 12 o'clock at night when nobody's about, this will actually shut the water system down. We're directly now in the plant room above the intake room downstairs. So you can see this is where the gas pipe actually comes up through the floor. So it follows up, straight to another isolation. Then you have your emergency lockout switch. Quite simple, it's your gas guard. If there's a gas leak, we've got various sensors around, it will actually shut this down. It's linked into the fire alarm system. There is an, an emergency cutoff button here. There is actually one near the door entrance as well. And let's hope this works. Gas is all switched off. Here is the main boiler which serves all of the heating needs within the building. It's divided into two sections. Um, it would have to be uh, serviced and maintained via a gas safe engineer. However, it is one unit, but it is actually two different boilers. So you've got one which is controlled via this section on the top here, and one which is controlled via this section on the top here. On the back of the boiler, you have two separate connections on. Each one can be isolated individually while the other is still working. And electrically, again, there are two different isolation points so you can isolate one from the other and still have one working while the other is off. Coming up the back of it, you have your primary system which serves along this end here. And that, th th this is your primary circuit which then um, serves a sub-circuit which has gone out through to the building. So this set of pumps here is your primary set of pumps and the ones which move the pipe, uh, move the, the hot water from the boilers through into your headers. On the back, behind it here, is your dirt air separator. This here um, releases any um, air within the system to ensure that it's constantly vented. And on the bottom of it as well, there is a drain which from time to time will need to be isolated, put into bypass and drained out because it will collect any dirt that it picks up within the system. Right, we're now in one of the locations, one of the cupboards for the main lighting and power disc boards, uh, fed from the sub mains from the MCCB board, which was downstairs. Um, the main uh, incomer switch disconnector is the bottom of the board here. This bottom section is power for your sockets, and the top section is for lights. All the disc boards, one key, it's all the disc boards and the LV panel downstairs. Um, if you get any problems with any sockets sending uh, no power in the classrooms, obviously get somebody who's authorised to go in the board to check, see what break was going off. Um, if you do have, if you do come to the board and a, you see a break is tripped out in the area, you've lost the power, you can try and reset the breaker. If it resets, um, there is no problem in there. It must have been overloaded. Um, if it chips out again, make sure you close the board up and uh, call a qualified electrician to come and check out the fault. Um, now we're up on the roof of the teaching block. Uh, the PV array is along the roof over here. This is the waterproof PV inverter. The DC switch is located underneath here. The AC switch is located here. And the other switch is downstairs in the main panel. If you need to isolate the PV for any type reason at all, Isolate down in the MCCB board in the LV switch room first. Isolate the AC switch here, then isolate the DC switch here. Just turn back on again, it's all in reverse. Operate the DC switch under the inverter, AC switch here, then switch on the AC switch down the MCCB board downstairs. Um, your input display is here and it's duplicated by the side of the LV panel downstairs as well. Green light shows power, everything is good. Amber light 
shows alarm and fault. Green light, everything's good to go. Uh, maintenance wise, probably to wash the panels down once a year. Uh, moving on, extract fans this end of the teeth. Here we have two of the main air handling units that serve um, the main hall, which is the one on the left, and the dining room and the kitchen, which is this one on the right. Both units have heat recovery unit uh, have heat recovery within them, which means that the hot air that it drags out of the space it puts back into the supply air that is feeding into the room, and also has heating coils to ensure that you're not getting extremely cold air from outside being put into the room. There are heating coils on the systems as well. Both units are controlled and monitored via the BMS and any set points that are adjustable on them, such as temperatures for the air that's serving the space, is monitored, controlled and adjustable on the BMS system. Here we have the uh, panel which will show you um, where uh, any leak detection has been identified. While the green lights are on, it is healthy and no um, refrigerant gas has been detected. If they turn red, um, it means the refrigerant gas has been detected and the siren will sound and flash at the same time. Uh, the mute button for that is in the electrical riser cupboard, which I'll show you shortly. Um, each area is uh, named, um, so it would be easy to identify um, where the leak has been detected. Um, and I will show, give you, show you very briefly one of the sensors at low level shortly. But this is the Ghent by Honeywell fire alarm system. Um, when the alarm does go off, it will indicate the zone and it will come up with a fire or a fault if you've got a faulty detector. Um, simply, when the alarm does go off, to reset the alarm, you press the reset button. Before doing that, you can silence the alarms and actually silence the buzzer on the panel itself. Um, on the display, it will tell you exactly where the, uh, where the fault is or the fire is, so you can go and check that area or check to see if the, um, the detector is damaged or needs replacing. It will also give you a printout on this receipt. Uh, first things first, you have a stop button by your, your, the entrance to your plant room. If you come into the plant room and you find everything's off, that'll be the first thing to check. The only light that would be on at that point would be your panel of live light. Should you want to check that any of the other lights are actually working or, or whether any of them have failed, you have a lamp test facility which you can press. It will display all the lamps that are working for you. Um, should any of them be out, they can obviously be reported to your same contractor or ourselves in the first year. Um, if we move along to the fire alarm, your system's uh, linked in with the fire alarm. Should you uh, have a fire in here or, or, or the fire alarm go off for any reason, the system will automatically shut down. During the periods of a fire alarm test, you have a fire override switch which is next to it with a key in it. Generally it will need to be in the off position which activates the fire alarm system. Uh Located behind the ductwork, which is adjacent to the roof hatch to get up onto the upper roof, there is a bank of condensers which serve the AC units on this side of the building. Each one of these condensers has a little note on the front of it which tells you which one serves what area and each one also has its own isolation. The pipework from these joined together onto this bit of containment and drop down through the riser and out to the respective rooms within the building via the riser which is adjacent to the roof hatch to get onto this roof level. To change the time setting, if you click on the schedule button, there's only two time schedules, heating system and hot water system. That's the button on the right hand side here shows the status, so they're either be on or off, so green or greyed out. Uh, to change the time setting, you click on the heating system or the hot waters, the principle is the same on both. It's in the form of a calendar, so we're currently, this is today. If you want to change a setting, um, you can change it by clicking on today, and you can change the entire series, which will change everything, or you can just change today. So, um, And then you have an all button, which basically means if you want to control all the units within one set point you can do so by highlighting that um, as you can see up here on the right hand side of the the screen um, you've got an on off and at the moment it's it's a start its set point is 22 degrees fan speed is set at low that is 
at the moment the default setting for this system. Um, if you want to alter the temperature, you press that. Sorry, let's cancel that. I'll just go back again. If you want to alter the temperature, if we were highlighted all, you would press setting, um, and then go to AC, and you will see there um, you have your operation mode. Okay. Is that when we come to perform the test, all we're interested in is will this gong work? I do not want to drain all the water out of the system and wait for the previously mentioned jockey pump to keep running 15, 20 minutes just to try and re-top up the system. So, top valve closed. And then we have a weekly test card procedure, week ending, and then we have C gauge pressure before test. The top gauge is known as the C gauge. I've already marked a C, so nothing is confused. Record C gauge pressure, it was at 3.8 bar. The gong works satisfactorily, stop valve is secured open, all other water supply valves are open, water storage tank full, and physically open the hatch and check the water level is full. We have just done the weekly test, so therefore water is seeping back into the tank. This will stop once water level has reached its full mark.